All right, guys. So next segment, I want to use this time to talk about credentials because I think this is the other large misnomer uh, or, or, or area that needs to be demystified in our space. Let's just like we did in the prior segment for OSDP, let's finally bury prox, please. So I'll share a short story with you. Uh, I, I went to a school district not not too long ago. They had taken the painstaking, they've gone through the painstaking process of recredentialing or credentialing everybody in their school district. And we're talking about 2,000 students, you know, 500 staff, you know, maybe they had 3,000 cards that they had just credentialed out. I said, cool, what format did you go with? And he said, oh yeah, those, them prox cards. Great, you like 125 kilohertz prox cards? Yeah got a great price on them. I'm like, oh, you know, that's not really a super secure format. I could buy this thing on eBay to clone your cards and blah, blah, blah. And the, the business administrator uh, kind of got up and walked out of the room, like disgusted. Like, I can't believe I just spent this much money and I'm going to have to go and, and re-credential. Like he kind of stuck his fingers in his ears, whoops, stuck his fingers in his ears and, and walked out the door. So why is Prox so bad it's a prox is inherently unsecure um so when you're presenting the card to the reader right talking about the front door and the back door is the front door of your home security there really are no checks and balances so there's an antenna and a chip on the card ultimately they get excited when is it when within that rf range of the reader and it doesn't discriminate whether it's a reader in the wall for true proper business intent and purposes of getting the building or if it's a device such as a prox cloner which are available very cheaply, just like the OSDP devices online, very cheaply available. And you can clone that card because it excites the chip and antenna of the card similar way and pulls the data off the card, reads the data, and then you can present that cloner to a second card and copy the data and you have an exact duplicate. I've actually seen uh, some stores that show like, oh, we, we copy regular, you know, brass keys, we copy car keys, and we copy... Uh, proximity cards and you know if you've got maybe somebody that's got like a gym membership and it's on a an unsecure prox card hey i want to duplicate that card so that way you know i don't lose my gym membership card or, or something like that but that same capability is possible for any organization that's using prox cards so if you could imagine worst case scenario you know I've, i'm an employee i'm in the parking lot i drop my card i leave and a bad actor who's just, you know, walking around the parking lot, picks up your card, clones it, duplicates it, and now has unfettered access to the facility uh, because the, the system doesn't know that that's a different card. It just is assuming that it is the person that is assigned to that card. So really, really, really insecure. So best practice, I would think, would say no more procs. But then what do you replace procs with? Because, I mean, I've got a list of different card formats here. 13.56 megahertz, iClass, CIOS, mobile. What does, what's the best card format? What's the most secure card format that HID has today? Um, and what, what makes it so secure? Okay, so the credential technology, I think is the important, important discussion here, right? So there's a lot of different technologies that fall into that 125 kHertz uh, frequency that HID procs falls under, and then a lot of credential technology that falls into the 13.56 megahertz, um, that, that frequency, which is also commonly referred to as contactless smart cards, right? Mm. So HID has several offerings, um, and we're also compatible with, uh, with, with several different offerings, including, so there's the iClass family, right? We're now in the fourth generation, if you will, of iClass called CEOS, S-E-O-S. But then we also have the ability to write HID encryption to third party 1356 megahertz credentials, such as MyFair, Desfire, EV1, EV2, and so on. Okay. Um, one thing I kind of wanted to touch on as you're thinking about this, I keep using the word credential, right? Um, you brought it up early on. Well, you know, hey, I, I have these metal keys in my building. I want to move to a card. I want to do something. I'm going to have procs, right? When you think about when HID first released the Prox card, okay, which again, HID Prox is our brand. There's lots of 125 kHz technologies that have come up over the years, yep. but HID Prox was the brand we released, what was it, guys, 1991, 1990? 
Um, early 90s. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was right around the same time. Like Nirvana released Nevermind. We released Box <laughs> Cards somewhere in the same vicinity. I think Pearl Jam released Ten that same year. Um, the concept then was more: let's move away from metal keys. Let's get right. a let's get a contactless key. Right. Our world has changed. This isn't just a key. It's it's a credential that can be your identification for a lot of different things, right? And having that relationship be more secure and be encrypted is definitely the goal. Yeah, and I think that that's a great way to kind of tie in the the conversation that we just had about OSDP. OSDP, you know, versus Wiegand. Wiegand technology created in 1979, perfected in the 80s, and has been the de facto standard. And the security standards from 1980s technology is the same technology that is being used today in Wigan formats in credential technologies. Yeah, you're right. The The proximity card was designed to replace a brass key, which was the least secure technology at the time. Prox right. was more secure, but times have changed. That was 1991. I was still in junior high school at that point. Um, so now I'm, uh, I'm almost 40, 39, and uh, that technology is no longer secure. So why are we still securing our facilities when, I, you know, securing facilities with electronic access control? And I just spent $5,000 per door securing my facility, but I'm using the least secure uh, credential technology. 